Hi and welcome back to Studio Tamra, the mystical paintress. Today we're going to be doing a plein air painting. Plein air is French for outdoors or open air, outside landscape. Um, it's 70 degrees here in Michigan, um, early May. The service berries are blooming, the pears are blooming. Um, it's just beautiful. I heard an Oriole and some wrens this morning, so um, I decided I would come outside and paint. So. Uh, we are going to be painting this canal behind my house, as you can see, and I'm going to bring you in as close as I can so you could see my board and my paints. Oh yes, the crows will be out. The light will change. Um, one of the general rules of thumb with plain air is that you don't have your your painting or your palette in the sun, but I have it in the sun so you can see it. So um, what I do is I have this awesome little book in my, in my bag and I always do a sketch of the scene. So I did a quick little sketch and, and painted it. So now I have a basic idea of what the painting will look like. Um, so I just took some, some dark mixed like brownie purple and I'm just gonna block this in real quick. Can you guys see? I don't wanna be in front of the camera. I want you to be able to see what we're doing. Okay, there we go. So, and this is actually a little bit darker. I'm gonna send a shout out today to all the teachers and para pros out there that are, during this corona, they are working on uh, teaching via the internet online and that's kind of a difficult thing to do so anyways um, okay so what we've got here is it got some big trees out there so we're just gonna with some real thin paint suggest some of these trees out here and block a little bit of this in Going from darkest dark to um, to lightest. So you always want to use your go do your darkest first. And water lays flat. So I'm just kind of blocking this in real quick. I'm gonna try and paint very fast today, so you guys can see it from start to finish. And you can pause it if you'd like to try at home. Um, but so I'm blocking in the water. As you can see, when the sky is light, the, the water's darker. Can you see that out there? Okay. All right, now. So. What a beautiful day today is. All these little creatures are out. Oh, it's wonderful. I love it. This is already kind of fun because you're gonna, I'm gonna play with some shapes. The shapes of the green pond scum. I'm gonna play with those because they look fun. So you could see I'm putting in a few little shapes of some pond scum. There. Now this is gonna be tricky because this there's all kinds of little inlets here and everything else, so. All right, first thing now, I got my basic painting drawn in. Whoops, dropped the brush. That never fails, that always happens. So, can you guys see the basic painting? Good, all right. There's the book, there's the painting. And I'm going to mix a little bit of, that was just neutral, darks. So I'm going to mix a little bit of cobalt and white and just put a couple little hint of the sky in here. Just a little. I don't want to overdo it or make it overwhelming. Just put a little bit in. Uh, if it's too blue, can I add a little white. Can you see my palette? Oh, this is very hard for me to see if you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, there, now you can. 
All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this, just a little bit in here. Just a little. Usually you want darker blue up at the top to give it more dimension, so. All right, now the water does not have blue like that, though. Water certainly has blue down here, doesn't it? Certainly does. So we're gonna just put it in. We're gonna use flat stripes because water runs flat and we don't wanna screw up and have our water look like it's not water. We might even put a little piece of pond scum right here too. I think I'm gonna, I just think it would be cool. Okay, so we've got a little bit of trees and stuff here too. So, you know, we're, Oh, hear those lovely wind chimes. Isn't this fun? All right, now, by the way, I didn't show you this. This is a viewfinder. And what you do is you hold this up and I've painted black and white on mine. It's plastic, so it will endure the weather. And you hold it up and that's how you get in your frame of what you're gonna paint. I love this, isn't this fun? Okay, back to painting. So, let's see, can we, I wish, okay. All right, so I'm using cobalt and white. I'm just adding in a little bit of sky. In the spring, you may wanna use viridian or cerulean because the sky's a little greener, but that's up to you. Okay, so I'm okay with this for now, this water. So first thing I wanna just kinda do is get my whole board covered with something. And remember, it's gotta be lighter if you're gonna be going on top of it. You don't wanna put a bunch of heavy oil paint and then try and go on top of it, that doesn't work. And you end up with mud, and that's no fun. Okay, so my next color. By the way, my favorite plein air easel of all time is Soltec. Look at this, it holds all your paints, all your brushes, everything you need, palette knife. I use brushes where down by the brush it's black, so there isn't a lot of glare from the sun, like the silver ones. I'm gonna keep these out, actually. Keep those right there. So, there it is, and there's Soltec, I love it. All right, back to business, right? So, let's see, what we're gonna do next is a good neutral color. Uh -huh. Let's see. A good neutral, we're gonna mix with I'm gonna use a little bit of my violet gray, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of cobalt blue. By the way, you will get used to mixing these. It becomes like second nature. I don't even think about it when I need a color. You gotta practice mixing colors a lot. So I recommend you do that. Practice, practice, practice. Um, I'm gonna add just a little bit of red Alizarin and Crimson because there's like a pink cast out there, I think. And I'm going to just put in a little bit of stuff here just to see if this is the color I want. And I don't know. It's pretty gray out there today, so um, maybe add a little more burnt sienna. Put this in. 
I'm using um, Gamsol or Odorless Terp in this cup. That's really all I'm using. So. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more alizarin because this is a little more red here, I see. And when I say a little, I mean little, little, little. The magic is in subtleties here. You don't want things jumping out at you looking crazy unless, you know, if you do. And if you do want that, then go for it. But um, yeah, okay. So. Got a whole bunch of gray there. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little more color. So I'm gonna add a little more burnt sienna, a tiny bit of green. You can use sap green, you can use viridian. Just a tiny bit in there, just enough to make it look like wild vegetation, right? Okay. Add a little burnt umber, get it a little darker. So I'm just establishing the base. Um, and then right in here is that lovely, I don't know if that's a service berry or a dogwood. Do you see it out there? But it's definitely a cool something. <laughs> Tree with little white or little beige things on it. So, okay. By the way, over here, we're gonna suggest, and we're just gonna suggest with a little bit of green, a fire tree line. So I'm just gonna put it in. I don't worry about going over any of the preliminary sketching because that doesn't matter. So we're just gonna suggest it a little. Oh, this is so nice and relaxing. Be very careful not to overdo yellow right now, too. I mean, you need it, but you don't want to overdo it, so. Okay, and then go over your treetops so that they're just getting lost in there. You don't want your eye going to a far tree line ever, so. There, so that's kind of lost, right? Good, that's what we want, that's lost. Good, 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 good. Beautiful. Okay. Now, there are all these lovely little buds popping out everywhere. So I'm gonna use a little lizarin crimson and some white. You put a little bit of this pink color, just a little, I'm not gonna overdo it. But there's just a little bit of it out there, and it's very pretty. This is like a close-up of the canal, so... Or a close-up of that scene, so it's not really... The vista, like Keith would do a beautiful vista with this scene. All right, so this is our background color. There's there's nothing specified here. There's no, I mean, I do kind of see that trunk of that tree, but there's nothing specified, really. It's just, okay, now I'm gonna show you guys a great secret. If you put paint where you don't want it, you can take a, a rag like this. See it? See the rag? Dip it in your turp and you can wipe an area off. So I wanna wipe off right where I'm gonna put this bright little pretty tree. I don't know what it is, but I wanna take all the paint off because just where I'm gonna put those specific leaves, like that. Okay, see how I did that? It's so easy. So easy, so fun. Okay, there. 
I know right now it's in the uglies. By the way, every single painting goes through a stage of what's called the uglies. That's so normal. This is probably in the ugly stage right now, but that's okay. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna just take a little Naples and white and a tiny bit of cad yellow light. And I'm gonna just touch this very, like a feather. Just suggesting where I might want this to be. And I use my fingers a lot when I paint too. Oh, we got a hawk up soaring up ahead. It must be must be meal time for him. There, see now how soft this looks and you don't see individual branches or leaves. So it looks believable. And then this does come out a little and we can highlight those later if we want to. That's totally fine. Probably will actually. And then what is above in water has to be below, right? So I've got to put a little bit of this tree here. Again, this is why we didn't put heavy, thick paint in the water. We kept it thin so we could paint over it, see? And water tends to pull things down, too. Okay. Boy, we've got chipmunks and red-winged blackbirds and all kinds of stuff out here. Okay, I'm gonna put a little brighter stuff here. Oh, and there's Ra. Oh, of course, something's bothering him. Not sure if it's another dog in the neighborhood or a friendly neighbor walking by. Oh, it upsets him. They don't have his permission. There, okay, so do you see how I established this whole scene now as water? So now at least I've got that in for now. It doesn't have to stay exactly like that and I'm okay if it doesn't too. I do want to add a little more white into the sky because I think my blue is a little too much. So I'm just putting a little white on a brush, any brush. It's not a clean brush, it doesn't have to be. And just add a little white, lighten the sky some. There, whiten up down here a little. Okay, there. All right, so next, when I look out there, I see there's a couple really dark uh, branches. Do you guys see them? Trunks of something. So we need to get those. And there we go. Okay. So the best way to do that, take a little burnt umber, ultramarine blue, mix a dark color. And this is about here. And there's one here. Remember nature is very random. Um, when you're doing this. Because if you just have one dark stalk sticking up, it's not gonna look real, just so you know. Okay, 
Uh, again, a little bit of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, mix it, go back in. And the light, the way the sun is hitting everything too, there are a lot of little straggler branches out there that I see. And you don't have to do the whole tree. I hold the brush just like this. Oh, can you hear that Baltimore Oriole? Or that might be a robin too. And if you feel like it's too dark, okay, just add a little more burnt umber. And I see, so this is above, it has to be below, right? This is above, it has to be below. This is above, it has to be below. And it has to be directly below to be believable. Okay. Generally, a plain air session with the Michigan Plain Air Painters will run anywhere from uh, two to four hours. Uh, the group generally meets around eight. We get started painting usually 8.30, 8.45-ish. And uh, we're done anywhere in the winter, sometimes early, 10.30. But usually in the summer, we're done somewhere or when it's warm in the spring. Um, something more like around 11 or 12. And then we all go have lunch and look at each other's paintings. It's a great time. Anyway, um... So I'm trying to do this like in around an hour just to help teach you guys a little bit about this process here. Okay. So I'm still just using burnt umber, French ultramarine blue or ultramarine blue. And I'm just putting in a little bit of stuff. See, there was a little bit too much blue on that one. But when I look out there, my eye catches just all kinds of little stuff. I'm not really even sure what all the little stuff is. Um, but the sh there's a lot of shadows out there, so. I'm gonna just try and get them best I can. There's little shadows in this too, up here. So what I do is I just touch the brush and then pull it very lightly up. So by the time you get to the top, that should be your little pointy smallest area, right? Should be, hopefully. <laughs> I've painted this canal so many times, it's almost to the point where I'm... <sighs> where I'm in that club. What's that club where somebody goes out and paints a scene every time of the year? Yeah. Okay, so touch up, and you want some to run right off the top. Because if you have everything stopped, that won't look real. So, we got something going on in here, but I, I can't really see what, because some of it's light, some of it's dark. Kind of just looks like this, right? And you don't want it to look like just sticks either. And then the, you got some here. I'm still just using that same mix, but it's picking up a little bit of this underneath stuff, so. Um. Okay, so I see some gray in here, so I'm gonna use my violet gray. Ooh, did you see that blue heron? He's beautiful, can you see him? Look at him, see him out there flying? He's cool. Um, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of a gray color 
little sienna, little cobalt, sienna's brown, cobalt's blue, and a little bit of my violet gray. And because when I squint, I see gray in here. This is what I see is gray. So I just want to paint what I see. So it's very hard to do. You know, your mind wants to tell you what to paint, but okay. Especially this time of year where everything's just kind of icky looking. And then there's gray in here. This is all gray, fuzzy, weird stuff back here. And also remember, people forget that plain air painting, it's a study. It's a study of nature. It's your connection with the color and the nature and the things you experience while you're standing there. It's not a completed um, studio painting. Like, you know, if, if you go in the studio, you're gonna spend hours and hours and something's gonna look, you know, a certain way. That, that's not what this is. This is just, oh, I feel like I wanna put a little red in. Put it in. Or a little pink, put it in. Um, I do see reds and pinks in here, so I'm definitely putting them in. I'm even using a little bit of alizarin and umber. I'm going to make a little darker. So if you want darker, add blue and this water line up here is almost black, isn't it? Wow. It's dark anyway. And remember the randomness of nature. Just it's very random. So you know, you don't want two trees, one on each end, like a person would do in a, in a drawing. No, 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 no. You want to copy what you see. Don't forget that. It's a good, it's a good thing to know. Try not to have your branches be too squiggly like worms. Um, some will be sharper, some will be less sharp. And I really like this look where, you know, your eye makes things up. So you don't have to draw and paint in every single last little thing. Just suggest a few things and let your eye make it up. Now, here's the thing with this, as cool as fun as this is to do. Now you got to do it all below because it's water. And we're going to put pond scum there, right? Okay. But we do need our little bit of gray tree stuff here, right? And then we need a little bit of that red in here. It's very tricky to paint spring paintings because, um, you know, spring is not, there's not beautiful rich greens, there's not leaves there's not you know all that real fun cool stuff is not there so you're kind of painting skeletons of trees you're painting bare bones of things and it's just not as rewarding at least to me so i'm going back to that gray brown brown and blue always will make gray adding a little alizarin to reflect this down here it's above it's got to be below it's above it's got to be below. If it's above, it's got to be below. Right? There. I'm going to put a little bit in here, too. Okay, so we've got all that, and I'm going to keep this one kind of impressionistic. I'm not going to try and make it look photographic. I don't even like photographic painting anymore, really. I, I did for the longest time, and I thought, oh man, the more photographic it is, the better of an artist someone must be. But, you know, I found out that's not the case. 
not even close. So, anyone with real good technical abilities can duplicate. It's sometimes a lot more fun to try and do something that hasn't been done yet. So, okay. So now I'm going to take a little bit of cad yellow and viridian green, just a little. Put a few greens. I see some greens in here, not a lot, just a few. And again, whatever's above is below. So I gotta go back and mix another gray. Like my whole brain, the whole time I'm doing this is, is thinking the way that I'm talking to you. It's crazy. And then, you know, we got these trees here. Go across. There we go. So, if you want to have a little more blue, just because you think it would look nice in a painting, by all means, mix a little more cobalt with white. Like this. And then, you know, oh, you want to have a few sky holes. It'll make this make it look more real. Yeah, it will, actually. So sky holes are just soft little places where you just, just touch. And if you think you got too much, you can wipe them off. But you just kind of suggest sky might be coming through right there. And every now and then there is a little bit of a where you'll see it. Even though there's a tree or something, you'll still see a little bit. So put a little blue here and there. Just look at what you're painting. Wherever you see the blue, put it. It is that simple. This is just the neutral color again. Okay, take a little bit of the burnt umber. Just going to put a few of these in. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue. When I squint, I just see a lot of shadows and stuff in here. I want to make this dark, this light tree here jump out more. And the way you do that is you got to add a little bit of dark under. As soon as you add a little dark under it, it's going to jump right out. See that? Isn't that neat? Isn't that fun? Little tricks. Little tricks. And there are branches. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue, dark, dark, dark. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt to this mixture for the bottom of this tree here. Just because the shadow of it has like that blue cast that I'm seeing. And you just paint what you see. That's, that's what you do.
Okay. Next, we're going to wipe off our brush. Pick up a little cad red light. Oh boy, I'm nervous about this. And yellow. And white. Should mix a nice little peachy color. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this in here. Feel like it needed a little peachy color here. Don't want to overdo it. And there'll, there'll be a little bit over here too then. Okay. Now we got a problem. One of the many problems of plein air painting is the sun is moving. So it's going to be hard to see my board for you folks at home. Hmm, what if I move this way a little? There we go. There's the canal. Here's our little painting we're doing. It's, it's getting there. Okay, so oops, too 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 brown, too blue at brown, right? Okay, and then we got like that red, peachy red color in the background there with the gray. We gotta put a little bit of that in here. So this looks real. I'm not doing all the individual trees and everything, just cause I just want this to be an impression of the scene, not a exact photograph of it so hold on one second okay so this is probably about half done so we are doing real good. When I look out there, I do see there is darker areas here on this tree from the shadow. And this is a funny um, color palette because usually in the summer, you'd be using a lot of green, sap green, viridian green, um, but this time of year, it's a lot of gray, <laughs> ochres. All right, now just for effect, we got to put a couple little, when you look out there, you'll see there's some dark areas that we didn't really, didn't really get them very good. So we're gonna add a couple dark areas, right? And a couple light areas. I'm going to take a little Naples and a little bit of my Cad Red, a little bit of gray, and just put a little bit of I'm doing this because when I look out there I see some real soft, light branches and things. And I just wanted to get them in here. So they will also be in the, in the water below. 
All right, so there's the basic painting. Now we are going to refine, do the fun part. So I have a big new brush here that is dry and I'm just gonna go sideways with this real light just to make it look like water. That's all you gotta do. That's it, that's all you gotta do. I know you guys can't really see this because of the sun now. Don't chase the sun, that's a rule not to do in plain air painting too. You don't wanna chase the sun. So. Okay. Sometimes if you add too many colors, it will start to look cartoony and you definitely don't want that. So I'm gonna use Viridian Green. You can also use Sap Green. Add a little bit of Cad Yellow Light to it to make that pond scum color or whatever pond scum color you like. I guess you could use Ochre. I kinda, I kinda do wanna add a little Cad Yellow Light to my Ochre there. Okay, so this is how we're gonna see if this works. First of all, I have to move my whole setup a little bit so you guys can see me because the shadows are coming in. Okay, there, can you see that better? Super, okay. Um, so you can do this one of two ways. You can either use a brush or you can use a palette knife. Palette knives, you load only one side like this. Can you see that? And then you would just go nice and flat across. So you load one side. You can use Naples or Cad Yellow Light with a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of green. So you kind of get a good combination. You might want to add white if it's too yellow. A little more white and green. Just mix it until it looks like pond scum to you. And if it looks like pond scum to you, that's all you need to worry about. Okay, it's going to go on top of your reflections because it's literally on top of the water. Ooh, did you see that big fish jump? Isn't this fun? This is such a great place to paint. Okay, so this is clearly, this paint is clearly too thick on the board. So you take a brush. And by the way, the further back it goes, the thinner your lines will be. The closer to the, to the viewer, the thicker they will be. Okay, so we got a nice little pond scum here. I almost feel like we need more white though. It doesn't feel scummy enough. There we go. And it can be different colors too. It's just kind of... Yucky pond scum. See? And pond scum can be different colors too. It doesn't have to all be the same color. So I'm gonna add a little dark to this just to give it dimension. Why not? Ah, oh, there's not that much pond scum right now this time of year, but believe me. There is that much pond scum. All right, and then it, there's a little bit of it lining, kind of lining the water's edge too, but it's greener, it's further away. So I'm gonna add a little more green. I don't wanna lose my...
And then, you know, you just put it wherever you see it. I see a lot of it, so. I might have overdone it. So, good thing about overdoing it is you can get a good rag. And just lift some of it off, see? That's why I love working with oil paint. It's like you could play with it. Like a kid, makes you feel like a kid again. Love oil paint. Okay, so now I wanna put a little bit of blue. In here. all of this stuff going on. I'm trying to show you guys some simple techniques like put blue different levels of blue. I look out there and really the water in most places kind of looks almost black really because it's kind of mucky so there's not a whole lot of blue out there that I see and you could paint it anyway you could fake it and people will believe it or they won't I mean unless they're at that exact spot with you they wouldn't know right but yeah, so if I was out with the group and I was standing around and I had, you know, three hours to chill, I would either probably spend a long time on something like this or do two of them. I have done two of them before. So we've got some pond scum. The best part about it is being out in nature, listening to the birds, listening to the tree frogs and the critters. And if you pick a good spot, there won't be people and ambulances and, you know, police cars and fire trucks and screaming people and all that. Go out in nature where it's beautiful. Pick a spot that's really, truly beautiful. And just paint there. So I'm just touching our little tree here with just a very little bit of highlight using my finger. And then I'm gonna put it in the water. I should probably pick easier things to do if I'm going to do a very fast painting because there are things much easier to do. This canal, the problem with doing a canal is there's so much going on and you got to figure out what do you want to paint and what do you want to edit out. I'm going to load up the palette knife because there is, if you look out there, there are a couple birch trees. So we're just going to suggest them like this. And this is more about just kind of teaching you guys some stuff about painting. There's three birch trees. One of them's here. It goes all the way up. And then at the bottom it kind of gets lost, but you do see it also because it's above. It will be below in the water 
Oh, hummingbird. Hummingbird. Ruby throated hummingbird on the hummingbird feeder. Oh, I wish you guys would have seen that. Um, that was cool. All right, so tree, this tree would come down like that. This tree comes down like this. Starting to get the picture? Yeah, I know, that looks really messy, but I'll show you what we're gonna do. So what we do next is this was dark, we just go over it. that. Oil is super easy to pick up. So, so here is your birch tree. And when I look out, oh we have some service berries too out there. scum back in right on top of that. Pond scum goes right back in. Okay, I don't know what this is. It's a crusty. It's gotta go. Okay. Oh, I smell one of the neighbors is barbecuing. Oh man, that's another wonderful thing about summer. Okay, so we don't quite want this to be that prolifically in there. I mean, there's definitely a birch tree there, but come on. Same thing here. See, things can be suggested and they don't have to be obnoxious. birch tree is there, but it just looks kind of obnoxious. It's too white. Okay, so here's another cool thing to do with the birch tree. Take a little palette knife like this, right? Load it up with a little bit of dark, because birch trees have what? So use violet, gray, blue, and brown on the palette knife. Make a nice gray. And then just load one side of the knife like that, right? And come out and just might that might be too much. That might be too much. I'm trying to teach you guys things so it's hard to concentrate and paint it correctly, but you can always lift it off. There, now it's a little more believable. And this little guy actually does have, believe it or not, this little birch tree has some branches. Usually they're pretty straight up, but that guy had some branches, so we're going to put them in there. Just to make it look a little more real. There, just a little more real. Not really real, just a little more. And 
Okay, now to push that canal back, 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 we got to put a little dark edge on this water. Yeah, that's dark, all right. That's too dark. Don't want black. I don't know, some artists paint with black and it's beautiful. Mary Rupp used to paint with black. Phenomenal artist. First female illustrator in the country. First female teacher at the Center of Creative Studies. She used black. There, I like that. I like that. I do see, though, that I need to get a little bit of this in here, too. It's just, it's, a, it's bigger than, there, now it's, that's better. Now it looks a little more real. Uh, this is too black. When I get to the detailed stuff, I almost have to get in closer to the painting. <laughs> Sorry. I know you can't see right now, but you'll be able to in just a minute. Okay. All right, and then, you know, I just kind of look out there and you know, we got a couple exciting little things here and there. Just little nooks and crannies. They're kind of like, hey, I'm here. Don't forget me. So we're going to put some in. Got it. We got to put in this dark too. Boy, when the sun goes away, it gets chilly in the shade. Oh, I love that little wren so much. You hear him? I hear you, little wren. All right, so I am... Just putting in a little bit of dark here, just because when I look out there, there's a little more than what I had, and it's got to kind of go in, so no big deal. We'll just, you know, we'll just follow the lines down, and, and then we got to go back over our nice pink color. Got Rod Doberman out here standing here next to me. Okay, so we gotta go over this color now too. Hi Rod. We want to cut that orange because it almost looks like there's a fire going on or something. We don't know what that is. So we'll use a little bit of violet gray. And we'll just put a few little wisps in here. Okay, and then the next thing we got to do... It's just a few branches, and I, I'm afraid this big brush might be too big. So, you can always use your palette knife. Put your palette knife out, load one side. This is something you do have to practice. You will mess it up if you overdo this. Um, and you don't want straight white either. So, I'm going to just put a few... And then they got to be below, because whatever's above is below in water, right? But 
put a few of these in here. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. I'm about done just because, you know, it's just an impression. I was really excited. Oh, there's a little, another little bird. He's our little friend. Oh, he's gone. So I'm just going to add a little dark under some of this pond scum just to kind of give it some dimension, three dimension, using a little bit of uh, Viridian and Burnt Umber, or you can use Sap Green and Burnt Umber, just to give it a little dark underneath the Sap Green underneath the slimy lily pads and pond scum and stuff. That's pretty cool. That's fun. Isn't that fun? So here's a pretty little... Let's move you away. All right. There you go. Okay, so if you could see the canal, right? And here's our little painting of it. I love it. It's a happy, beautiful, colorful little canal. So that was a fun little brief plein air painting session. Nine by 12 masonite board. Put some fingerprints in my book and uh, Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Mystical Painters with Studio Tamara. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe, it's free, and thank you to all my Patreon sponsors. Have a wonderful day. Bye.